Yeah, I like baseball. Yeah, I've been every place we've been. While we were, I was Baltimore, actually the Orioles were playing pretty good at that point in time with Showalter, and uh, and then when I was in New England, Boston was hot. They had Big Poppy and all the boys. I mean, it was it was really good. So I've been been good being around baseball. Tennessee, we didn't have anybody, so I didn't root for anybody. <laughs> Coach, how could uh, uh, we uh, look at the development of uh, Ade, Audrey Kunde? Well, he's, a, he's, he's coming along every week, getting a little better, working really hard. Um, you know, obviously we saw the, our, our, the organization saw the talent in him to draft him. And, uh, you know, we haven't been disappointed in that area. It's just, you know, it's like any rookie, there's a lot to learn. And you're seeing everything kind of for the first time. And uh, it just takes a while. But, I, I, you know, I think for what we ask of him and what we've expected, he's, you know, living up to expectations. Not not a lot. It's just the guy's got to step in and maybe even be more of a rotation guys doing it. But they all know how to do it. They all learn, you know, from the very beginning. You know, I told you we kind of learn concepts and stuff like that. And everybody has to learn how to do all of it so that that doesn't happen. That all of a sudden somebody's out and boy, the wheels fall off because now you can't run half your stuff. So the other guys just got to step in and do the same things we ask Dante to do. Is there something that, because I mean, how we strip. How he strip sacks a lot of times to maybe some of the one-on-one -on -one pressure they would get. Are there things that he'll bring that you miss that you do miss though with this? Sure. Any any time a guy's a starter and he's out, you're going to miss the starter. I mean, the guy. There's a reason why that guy started over somebody else, but it doesn't really mean the backup guy is a is a poor player by any means. It means just that guy's got some knack of, especially in that you know personnel group that we have that we want to use him. But, you know, it's like any outside rusher anywhere around the league. I mean, you know, when a guy's out, sure, you miss him, but guy's got to step up. And it ain't the first time that we've ever been without, you know, a defensive end in a game. So it doesn't make any difference. This next man up, you got to step up, and you got to do it. Did he a couple of weeks back when you were uh, talking about uh, Richie Grant and learning the defense, and then he had to, had to play last game, injury. Uh, him being on the field nickel. He said he's split between nickel and safety now. Just where is he at? Like, you know, if he, if well, it's the same thing. We're not trying to, you know, we're not trying to overload him. We're trying to give him some calls that, you know, we think that fits his personality and his um, attributes. And so, um, you know, we're not trying to overload him. It is like last week, we played him in there some. We played Hall in there some. We played Chris Williamson in there some. So. Every one of them has a little different knack, has a little different ability. You try to tailor the calls to their abilities the best that you can, you know, but, it with, but without giving it away. The other team isn't stupid either. Now, if they look out there and see 27 only does this and 34 only does that and 29 only does that, they're, not, they're, they're studying film too. So guys got to know how to do it all. Um, you know, it's up to us as coaches to kind of get them up to speed on all that stuff, but at the same time, uh, it's up to us in playing and making the calls to try to not put them in harm's way too much. That was something that Richie Grant was talking about yesterday is where you put him in practice and, and moving him around. He was like, you know, I have to know this and this and this. How do you feel like he's compartmentalizing kind of his learning and development? It's day to day. I mean, he's, he's a rookie and especially in the back end, we do a lot. And, and we've done less this year so far than we have in the past, but we're we're adding more and adding more and trying to. I started too fast, uh, you know, in, in the Philly game. And then we kind of backed off a little bit and we've kind of now started creeping back up a little bit into what we're doing. So, uh, but it's, it's like every, every day. He's just, every time he sees it, he had a mistake yesterday and it was glaring. And so we've corrected it. So hopefully today when I watch it, it's not the same mistake. All those guys, you know, you learn by making a mistake. It isn't any different in coaching. I mean, most of the stuff that I do is because I screwed it up probably somewhere else along the line and figured out that isn't the way to do it, do it this way. So it's just like that's the same way with players. You know, it's, we're, it's, it's the, he's, he's working at it. He, the good thing is all you can ask guys to do is work at it hard, study it, try to do the best they can and learn it, and that's what he's doing.
I, I want to go back to what you thought, what you were talking about about like you put a lot on their plate in week one and then since tapered back. I know you've talked about that a couple of times. Can you give me just like an example of maybe something that you gave to them and you're like, you know what, actually I want to taper this back a little bit? Well, I just think the menu that I had going into the game was probably too long. Okay. It wasn't necessarily a particular play. I probably just had too much in for that game. We should have just concentrated probably more on just the RPO and the zone read stuff of it and kind of let some of the other exotic stuff go. And just, hey, when it got to third down or got to some of that, you know, everybody kind of thinks it's like, well, okay, you got this third down package and you got this first and second down package. Well, it's the same dude running that stuff. It's the same brain still doing that. So if you put a lot on third down, and but they're you know that's still they still got to know all the stuff from first down. It's not like you're sending in a whole new defense on third down. So I just think in the first game I probably had too big of a menu, and probably just needed to hone it down. So we kind of have in the past here, and then like I say, each week we've kind of added a little bit more back because you can tell that they start feeling comfortable with seeing the same thing over and over. How does that ramp up here? Well, the difference is the first two places, especially, uh, you know, New England, I took over a defense, and I may have added my own touch to it, but it was already an established defense with an established calls. And so I'm running the same calls that uh, Romeo Cornell ran, Belichick ran. I may have tweaked some things a little bit and added something, but I didn't change the whole package. So then I go to Baltimore. I'm certainly not going to change the package at Baltimore. I mean, they're number one in the league when I get there. So all I do is you add your own little nuances to it. And over the years, after eight years, it kind of becomes a little bit different. But it wasn't anything new. At Tennessee, it was similar from Dick LeBeau's because we do a lot of zone pressures. Well, that's what Dick LeBeau did. It was all it was was different verbiage. It was the same thing but just called something different. So the guys kind of could relate going, oh, well, yeah, that's what this was. Well, here it was really a lot different than what was done in the, in the past, a lot. So it's like starting over and learning a whole new system. Not only verbiage, but the whole how we play. Did you, did you know that coming in? Sure. Okay. I wasn't sure whether that was one of the you discover a few months ago. Wow, okay. No, I mean, I, I don't know if I knew it the day I got hired, but I knew it within a week after watching film. Okay. And going back to Richie for a second, you said about a month ago that, you know, part of how we need to get on the field with the team to run the defense better. Was there a specific area that he focused on or that you focused with him on to get him to this point? Well, he's kind of really learning a position. You know, we're not really switching him a whole lot back and forth in practice. We're trying to get him honed in kind of on one position and learning that rather than doing multiple really multiple things. I know he's playing some safety out there, but most of the safety that he's playing is when it's the, their defense. It's the card team. Okay, so he, see, he gets his safety practice in there, but when he's with us, he's really getting his nickel practice in. Was, that, was he initially, when, like a month ago, doing both? Well, a little bit, back. yeah, probably. And so it was harder for him because he was back and forth and back and forth and, and, uh, and trying to learn a, he, he, one position for the first time, and, and there are two of them. And now it's kind of like a little more central, you know, trying to hone it down on him a little bit. Yeah, Coach, it looks like their um, passing attack, their main weapons are uh, Waddle and Gisecki. Um, You know, how do you all look at those matchups? I mean, Parker might, Parker showed up as uh, limited yesterday. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, he's always, he's a problem too. They're all, they're all kind of a problem. The backs are problems too coming out of the backfield. They're pretty good receivers. So, I mean, they got a talented offense, and, and, you know, the quarterback's a talented guy, another guy that can run and, and move around and can scramble and do all that kind of stuff. I'm a very mobile quarterback. Jacoby is sneaky mobile. Mm -hmm. He is like Roethlisberger was. He's kind of like you would never think Roethlisberger is a, you know, hard guy to get down, but he is. He's kind of nifty, and he's big. And Jacoby's kind of the same way. He really does a pretty good job of scrambling, and he's a big guy that when you get him, you better wrap him up because he can break the tackle. So they got a lot of weapons on offense, but, yeah, those guys, you know, uh, especially 88 had a big game last week. Um, 
Guy's got a great catch radius, can run good routes for a tight end. He's a tough matchup. Um, you know, and Waddle's just as, you know, a premier, premier wide receiver as a rookie. I mean, the guy's a dynamic, dynamic talent. Anything else? We good? Yeah, All right. Thanks. Thanks Appreciate it. Thanks.